has very little to do with revolution. <laughs> that which has to die, dies. But my dreams keep going over their path, gifted with the responsibility of defiance, chancing their fate, basking their fare, paying their fare, basking their sound against the foretelling sky. Every great war, fueled by indignation, kneels before a sympathetic strangeness that shapes the uninitiated with the colors that lose themselves in brightness. By mountains and this ashen ground, for reasons told to me, I remain a runaway. The wheel turns larger and larger, carrying forward our fears, leading them into a glorious fever. Another lifetime away from silence, wasted as a passenger, called into this burning train. This one is called Bodies. Bodies, when tired, turn black, emitting signs that they need to move to a quiet kind of freedom. Amongst the light live objects on show, with, subtle, with subtitled explanations and triggered associations. Above judgment and victimhood lies a refuge for the mind, truly as it is, sacrificing the need for consciousness and the struggle for aesthetic interaction. There lies a memory exhuming evidence through stagnation and transition of what metaphors we represented of how contained by bruises we remained. Sepulchred in the dissection of being, unveiled identities disappear into the hierarchy of the ether. Guarding the gate is an inveigling puzzle, forcing an abandonment of any feeling of estrangement of what has just passed. What actually happens when we build monuments to our expression? Is it merely a foray against the immeasurable crime of being alive? This one is called Love, but I write lots of poems called Love for some strange reason. It's a very sad poem, and it's the one I wrote day before yesterday. I make you my home, I clean out my heart, decant all my thoughts, sanitize them, sever all extraneous emotions that make me want more, surround myself with niceties, filter out all conversation that challenges, listen intently, lose all sense of the past, forget there was ever a day where I had expectations, will you want me then? Will you stay? Then perhaps I can be in peace with love flowing intravenously through me and happiness entering my windpipe through a tube. <laughs> so basically the poem is about the fact that if you give up you know, every single bit that makes you alive for love, then are you dead or are you in fact loved? Knowing. Immersion in an imagined state is not owning what you experience. Picking up the color that you encounter bit by bit, the mystical idea of something never staying the same. Things re reorganizing themselves perpetually till they find a unity, the intimacy of the blur that a vast space inevitably becomes. The ambiguity of seeing even the elements in fragments as the brutal lattice of matter fastens tightly, imposing its own validity. In nature, I am protected by something that can't be found, that lends itself to you, to show you a way to communicate, viscerally past logic and metaphor. In time, I become just a window, a window that opens into the wind, wind that enters me trembling, fearful, not just of what it has seen, but aware of the constant vigilance of the eyes that watch me, the eyes that remind me of how tired of myself I am, till I become more the answer to a question. This poem is called Don't Talk to the Past. Days gone by need no names. They are already drowned in your idea of them. The past is a portrait 
frozen in purpose, seemingly inside you, but really it waits in its own sense of time, staring. You say days gone by cancel a debt, but my search for them enslaves me, leaving inside me only this childish need for an immediate absolution. This life and this love I remember is a kind of deensis. I need to know more before I fully understand, before I can reduce it to its essence in which it made me feel what it wanted me to feel. Slowly but faithfully, I source my stubborn refusal. It comes from an induced memorializing centered around echoes compelling and heroic explanations of times gone by. We have been what we have always been. I know that by the way our challenges honor us. I know that from the indomitable self given to me.